Hi guys! Today I'm back to talk about guide dogs. This is my guide dog. I got her from the Guide Dog Foundation for the Blind up in New York just a couple months ago. So this video is going to be me talking about a few different criteria I think you should consider that are kind of big yeses or nos about whether or not you should get a dog. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience getting her um, and what it's been like so far. This video is going to be the first video in a playlist of other videos that I used when making my decision to get a dog. Getting a guide dog is a huge investment of yourself, and it's also a huge change to your life, so it's really important that you get a lot of information about it. So hopefully this playlist will help you get kind of the full scope of what it's like to have a guide dog. The playlist will include things like what it's like to have the dog, the pros and the cons of having the dog, um, where the dog comes from, how they're raised, different things like that, so you can kind of get a pretty full, big picture about what it's like. One of the biggest criteria you should consider in getting a dog is finances. Most schools will provide their dogs to blind people for free, and most schools will also pay for any transportation and travel costs associated with getting your dog. A lot of them will also help you with vet care, um, maybe other kinds of care for your dog like supplies and food, especially if you can show that you have financial need. But still, are you going to be able to pay a vet bill in the last minute when something happens and it costs $2,000? Just remember that these dogs are incredibly hardy. Um, they've been bred and taken care of to be very healthy dogs. So the anticipation is that they're not going to cost you too much, but they might. And they will come associated with certain costs. So are you in a place where you can afford to give up a little bit of your money for your dog? especially without causing yourself too much undue stress. The second thing, do you even like dogs? When you get a guide dog, you have this fantastic new mobility tool, but you get a lot of dog with it. Your dog is with you all the time. When they're working, they're still a dog, and sometimes they still do dog things. When you're at home and they're not working, they're just like any other dog. They're a dog that won't chew on things, they won't bark incessantly, they won't bite people, but they're still a dog, they still want to play with you, they'll still slobber all over you, um, and things like that. So if you really hate dogs, but you think a guide dog could help you, I highly recommend go to your friend's house and play with their dog, or go to a shelter, get to know a few dogs first. When I was in training, I remember telling myself, wow, it's a good thing I like dogs, because you just start to drown in dogs once you get one. Another big thing is consider the public interaction changes you're going to have. When you're out and about with your dog, and this really depends on where you are, but you risk getting a lot of attention. On my college campus, I tend to get a lot of gasps and a lot of comments. A lot of people ask me if they can pet her. Um, sometimes people try to distract her and do different things. So are you someone who can kind of deal with all of that extra everywhere you go? I'll tell you something. You don't have to be a special kind of person to put up with it. But if you really can't stand when people are always talking to you, or maybe that makes you a little bit nervous, just think about it. Imagine in your head maybe how it would go, um, just so that when you end up with your dog, you're not too nervous about it. The thing with the public interaction is something that I think anyone can deal with, so I don't want that to be something that scares you, but I think it's helpful to be prepared with that. Another big thing is time. When you get your dog, you're likely going to have to give up two weeks to four weeks of your life. And that's not even mentioning what it takes once you get home. And I'll tell you something about training. I went to a two-week pretty intense training session at GDF, and there was no time to do anything else. So don't imagine yourself going to training and doing work on the side or maintaining whatever schoolwork you have. It's going to be really hard. But at the same time, if you're thinking that you can kind of mitigate that, perhaps go to a longer training program like a three or four week one where the training isn't quite so intense where you might have extra time to be able to keep up on your work. But of course this means that you'll be away from home for a little bit longer. Once you get home things will not be automatic. You do not go home with a robot. You have been given the tools, you have been given the dog, and now it's your responsibility to go forward. In my experience I've only had my dog for two months but the first month was definitely a lot of work. Going places took more time, it took a lot of energy, my dog was trying to test me and I had to be really diligent about every time she did something wrong, I had to correct her, I had to stop and correct her. Um, so it's definitely a little bit of a time suck sometimes. I'd say that on any given day it takes me about an hour and a half to two hours to take care of my dog. That's including four to six break times a day where she can relieve herself, which maybe take 10 to 15 minutes each. And then I feed her twice a day, which doesn't take too much time. 
I usually brush her teeth and brush her every day, which probably collectively takes me about half an hour. Um, and then there's just the time that she needs my attention. She wants to play a little bit, or she wants me to pet her. She's a dog, and she's a living thing, and she definitely deserves a little bit of my time outside of just keeping her alive. So, are you in a place where you can afford to spend a little bit of time like that? I consider myself a pretty busy, full-time college student, but I manage to work everything I need to do for her into my schedule. So, I'm thinking that for most people, it is definitely possible to work in a dog into your life, but it definitely does take some investment of your time and your energy every day. So, just remember that. Now, here are some of the things that I think are the pros and cons of having the dog. So I'm going to also talk about what people in general say, but maybe things that I don't personally feel. So a big pro is of course the mobility, and that's the whole point of getting a dog. So what's the difference between a cane and a dog mobility? The cane is going to tell you maybe 90 to 99 percent of what's right in front of you. You have a small bubble, but you know the feeling of the ground, you know every crack, you know anything on the ground right in front of you. But you know zero of what's outside of your bubble. You can use mobility techniques so that you can find different places, but it takes a lot of practice um, and you have to have been to that place before to really be effective in finding it quickly and easily. A dog won't tell you most of what's in front of you, but they can tell you a lot about what's around you. So the way a dog works is that they'll tell you what you need to know right in front of you. So if there's any kind of step or level change, she will stop. And then I just feel with my foot and then I feel the, the change in ground and we move on. If there's any kind of obstacle, any, any ground obstacle, any tree hanging above, or just something in general around me, typically she'll stop, or if it's easy, she'll just walk right around it, and I'll never even know it's there. If she stops at one of those things, I have two options. I can feel it and just try to get us around it, or I can simply tell her to find the way, and she will get us out of there wherever we are. For my friends in training who are completely blind, their experience was different from mine, because I'm partially sighted. So just keep in mind that what I'm telling you now is from the perspective of someone who's partially sighted, I really can't speak for someone who's completely blind. My dog can bring me through really complex situations. For example, my college campus is pretty busy, so sometimes there are some tables out on the main roads of the campus advertising for different organizations and fundraisers. For me, this can make it really hard to get through those because there's a lot of people, chairs, tent poles, and things like that in my way but my dog can really smoothly and easily get me through all those things. And it's definitely really helpful and much more efficient and also less stressful to just kind of turn my brain off and just follow my dog and she always gets me where I need to go. Again, <coughs> these things take time. When my dog comes home with me, I know exactly where I need to go, but she has no idea. And so it's definitely taken some time for her to get used to it. But now more and more she is getting used to it. Another thing that my dog can do for me is get me around moving obstacles, which is mostly people. So my college campus, like I said, is very busy, but when people are coming at us from all different directions, she can pretty efficiently get us through all those people, and I don't really have to think about it. It's not as much mental effort as it used to be when I was just using my cane. Another great thing about my dog is that she can find things for me. When she came from training, she knew how to find elevators, escalators, doors, and stairs. She also knew how to find new things for me. So, for example, I taught her to find my room during training. So, you can always teach your dog to find new things. For example, I have already taught her to find trash cans for me, and I'm working on, fi I'm working on teaching her to find me drinking fountains. As I'm partially sighted, I've often relied on my sight to see things on top of my cane. I just had a hard time relying on my cane because I walk really fast and my cane tends to uh, miss things. But with my dog, I've been able to trust her because I know that she sees everything. Even though my dog's not perfect, she's never messed up her guide work. She's never missed a step or ran me into something. And if she ran me into something, it was maybe a tree branch that ba barely grazed me. So I know I can totally trust her, so I've been able to walk with my head up, with my shoulders up, with a lot more confidence than before. And I definitely think this is a huge difference from my cane. Now what are some of the cons of having a dog? Well, while she does help me take my mind off of finding obstacles when I'm working, at first especially, but less now, I had to spend a lot of time making sure that when we were walking somewhere, she wasn't getting distracted by smells or food on the ground. But especially at first, it was definitely a lot of work to get to new places, and it also took me longer to get places. When I get somewhere, I can't just fold up my cane and put it away because I have this dog now and I have to find a spot for her to sit. I will say that with my dog, finding somewhere for her to lay down and then her relaxing when I'm doing things has never been an issue. 
Like, for example, at a restaurant, it's re she's really good at just getting onto the table and falling asleep. I do have to hold onto the leash, but most of the time I actually forget that she's there and so do the people around me. Like I said before, this depends on the person, but the what it takes to take care of your dog can be a pro or a con for certain people. So like I said, I have to keep up on her daily grooming, brushing her teeth, feeding and watering her, which means that every day in my backpack I have to carry around an extra water bottle, a foldable bowl, um, an extra meal of food for her, and things like that. She's chewing on a bone now, so don't mind those sounds. I also have to maintain, for example, clipping her nails, giving her her meds like flea and tick prevention and heartworm medicine. I have to coordinate with a veterinarian to make sure she has her vaccines down. And if she ever gets sick, I'm going to have to take off time to make sure that she's okay. So it definitely takes some preparation. Another con, and some of this just depends if it's a con or a pro, is the public interaction. Sometimes I just want to go where I'm going and I don't want to have to stop to talk to people, but I kind of have to. I'm representing, in a certain way, the guide dog and service dog community. I can't be rude to people, so I have to stop and let them know. Anytime somebody asks, I always have to say, no, but thank you for asking, etc. Um, so sometimes it just takes a little bit of extra energy out of my day. But at the same time, I've had some really positive interactions with people. So this really depends, but it's definitely a big change from having the cane. Those are some of the pros and cons of having a dog. To sum up, I think that before we get a dog, make sure that you like dogs, you have the time, and that you have the finances. Dogs definitely help with mobility. Overall, she makes me more independent and more confident when I'm walking. I really enjoyed my training experience at GDF. Uh, my dog is super well trained. She is a, just an absolute angel at home, um, and I, I definitely highly endorse them. I'm hoping to, in the future, make some other videos about all the different parts that go with having a guide dog. So, for example, the equipment, training process, application process, and things like that. But for now, I hope this video has helped you make the decision of whether or not a guide dog is right for you. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to email me at easiervision at gmail.com or just post it in the comments down below, and I will see you guys next time.